What's up, folks? This is your boy, Darko. Welcome to another edition of Kindles and Kicks. Okay, so today I'm going to give you a brief recap of my reading month in March and also what I'm reading right now and plan to read for the month of April. March was the worst reading month I've had this year, but also it was the best. It was the worst because I only got a chance to read three books. Three. However, it was the best because all three of those books were straight fire, okay? Like five fireballs. See, we don't use stars here at Kindles and Kicks. These books got five fireballs and I am going to tell you why. Okay. So the first book I read was a song for our bone by Guy Gabriel K. This was not only my first GGK book, but also the first book I've read in the historical fantasy genre. And I have to say that I'm a huge fan of Guy Gabriel K in historical fantasy. If it's anything like this. So I'm asking all of you who are watching this video, if you're a GGK fan or a historical fantasy fan, please put your favorite GGK and historical fantasy books in the comments because I really would like to read more in this genre and I'm happy that I was introduced to both GGK and historical fantasy through booktube. But yo, a song for our bond it's probably one of the only books I've ever read in fantasy that actually made me emotional. Like this book will definitely kick you in the feels. Yeah, there's a war going on in this book between two nations, one Arbonne and one is Garhalt. And Arbonne is a very progressive nation. They believe in female empowerment and they celebrate the arts and they believe in a god and a goddess. Then you have Garhalt, which is a very traditional nation. They believe only men should rule, that the arts are frivolous, and that, hey, that women just need to be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. And you know, as us men tend to do, we like to go to war. So yes, there is war and battles in this book, but the crux of it surrounds these tragedies and triumphs, these wonderfully complex characters face throughout the story. The main protagonist is a guy named Blaze. And he is just one of the most well-developed and relatable characters that I have ever read in fantasy. He might be in my top 10 fantasy characters because of all he endures and overcomes in this book. I mean, it explores themes of personal identity, acceptance, split loyalties, because Blaze has ties to both nations and he has to kind of wrestle with his morals and loyalty to family and loyalty to what's right. And also like accepting his true destiny. It's a wonderfully written book. And I've never been to France, but the way Guy Gavriel K paints the picture of these scenes and these settings makes me feel that I was right there in the midst of what was happening. His prose, his dialogue, his character development, his, nar his narrative structure, everything about this novel was sheer perfection. And I can't wait to read more of Guy Gavriel K. Even the songs in here. Now I'm usually not a big fan of songs and books, but these were just so beautifully written. So, cause Guy Gavriel K, even though I guess he's an historical fantasy writer, he clearly has a knack for lyricism and poetry because these lyrics in this book are stunning. And I think it will touch the hearts of most readers who decide to give this book a chance. And it really drives home the point of how music and song can capture any event and can be used to express any emotion, whether it's anger or sadness, or whether you want to 
you want to write a song about love or war. I mean, it's all in this book and it's just a perfectly well-written piece of literature that every fantasy fan needs to read. And like I said, five fire balls. I need to find like a graphic somewhere so I can actually display like five fireballs up here. Like, you know, some people put five stars. I need to have like five fireballs on the screen to really illustrate how much I love books like this. Okay. So the next book I read was Finding Me by Viola Davis. And anyone who's familiar with Viola Davis knows that she is a wonderful and amazing actress with a true gift and talent for performing. And I find that it seems a lot of her talent comes from pain and tragedy and trauma she suffered as a child. Because in this book, it chronicles her rise from growing up in North Carolina in abject poverty, all the way to being, you know, an Academy Award, an Academy Award winner in Hollywood. And this is probably one of the most honest and open and self-aware memoirs I've ever read in my life because she is very transparent about her physical health, spiritual health, and emotional health. And when you read and learn all this woman overcame in her life, it is a miracle that she is still here today. It is a true testament to the fortitude of the human spirit when sometimes obstacles that seem insurmountable are put in your way and you find a way to overcome them. And she does this with such grace and such passion. Another great thing about this book is that it highlights the phenomenon of colorism. Viola Davis, she talks about her struggles not only as a black actress in Hollywood, but as a dark-skinned black actress in Hollywood, which is a totally different battle. Typically, the dark-skinned black woman isn't seen as pretty. She's always the friend. She's never found to be deserving of love, or she always has to be suffering. She's never happy. She's not a career woman. You know, there's so many roles that dark-skinned black women typically aren't cast for, and Viola Davis shows us this. And it really also puts a light on the trauma or transgenerational trauma that black people still suffer from as a result of slavery when light-skinned blacks and dark-skinned blacks were pitted against each other. And it's just really, really unfortunate that still to this day, people experience that. I mean, it's one thing to be a racist and you treat someone differently because their skin color is different. But it's an entirely different sickness when you treat someone of your own race or ethnic group differently because their complexion is lighter or darker than yours. It's just completely insane and it's something that's not focused on enough. The only other entertainer I seen touch on this was Trevor Noah because in South Africa, of course, it's something that they endure. Also, Spike Lee did a great job of illustrating the concept of colorism in his 80s movie, School Days. So if anyone is interested in seeing it in a sort of, sort of comical way, watch School Days, but it is a serious issue still to this day and has historically plagued Black Americans. I appreciate Viola Davis for being so honest about this, and I hope more people read and learn about colorism so we can also do something about that. So, yes, five fireballs for Finding Me by Viola Davis. The third and final book I read was The Spear Cuts Through Water by Simon Jimenez. And I don't need to say too much because I filmed a dedicated review on this book. It's one of the most unique and mind-bending fantasies I have ever read in my entire life. I don't want to say anything but first, 
go watch my review on it if you have the time. And second, just go read it. As a fantasy fan, I don't think you will regret it because the way Simon Jimenez just flips so many tropes on their head and just bends and breaks all kind of rules of narrative structure is something to be applauded. And I think anyone who reads it will not regret it. Also, watch the review done by D at Through the Pages with D because she gave probably the most thorough and detailed summary and review of that book I have seen yet on BookTube. So yeah, so watch my review and watch Dee's review of this book and I think you'll get a great idea of whether or not you'll like it. That was my March, all right? Now in April, I can tell you right now I'm reading Gardens of the Moon, and I plan to start my Malazan Mondays this month where I will post updates on my progress through the series and how I feel about it. I also want to give a shout out to Matt on Books. It's been great conversing with him while I'm reading it. He is like a Malazan expert and he's been really cheering me on. So thank you. I appreciate that, Matt. I'm also reading The Veil Throne by Kenley Yu, the third book in the Dandelion Dynasty. I started it last month and kind of set it aside for a little while. Now I'm back to it and so happy to be back in this world. I'm loving the Dandelion Dynasty. I'm also reading Recursion by Blake Crouch. This will be my fourth Blake Crouch book. I've read the Wayward Pines trilogy and I've also read Dark Matter. I heard Recursion was a pretty good book by him and I'm enjoying it so far. So it's, to me, it is great. And I'm also, I'm listening on audio book 1984 by George Orwell, but it's the new audible immersive listening experience, which is crazy. It is so dope. It's basically like a movie without the visuals. It's like you're listening to a film and Tom Hardy is acting or voicing Big Brother. I am loving it. And I think any fan of 1984 or just that kind of sci-fi should definitely check it out. Also in the last week of March, I was featured on Matt at Beard of Darkness channel as um, a guest and he interviewed me and it was just such a great time. It was my first live stream and According to Matt, it was like, we had like record numbers that night. Um, so thank you all who tuned in and anybody who watched afterward. Uh, I mean, I really, really enjoyed myself. And speaking of enjoying myself on a live stream, I also did For Whom the Bell Tolls with my boy, Brian Bell. When he reached out to ask me, I mean, I just couldn't believe it. Considering all the other much larger booktubers he's had featured on there, and then they have little old me, to say I was honored is not saying enough. I can't express my gratitude and thanks to Brian enough for having me on there. And thanks to both him and Matt, you know, my subscription numbers have really increased. I mean, I was like holding steady at 285, like 280, 285 for a long time. And now I'm at like 330. It's all thanks to those two guys and the extra ex exposure that they gave me by featuring me on their channels. So I can't thank Matt and Brian enough. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, just in case you don't follow me on Twitter or you haven't seen my most recent short, I have an announcement. I am really, officially, utterly, completely, definitely a booktuber now. And it's all thanks to my man, Ryan Skeffington. And you wanna know why? Do you wanna know what Ryan did for me? He sent me my first piece of book mail. He is the first author to bless me, okay? Yo, when I got this, first when he, when he sent me uh, a message on Twitter asking for my address, I was already honored, but when I got it in the mail, can you say like cheesing? And especially since 
oh, this looks like something that I am going to really, really enjoy and I can't wait to read it. And so I just want to thank you so much, Ryan. I greatly, greatly appreciate that. So yeah, I think that's it for all the updates. Um, I appreciate all the new subscribers, all the new watchers. Thank you everyone who has reached out to me to give me words of encouragement and support. Thank you everyone who always likes and comments on my videos is truly, truly appreciated. You have no idea, no words available can really express my gratitude for every single person who watches, comments, and likes my videos. It really, really touches my heart and I mean that. Like I truly, truly mean that. All right, this is Darko, Kindles and Kicks. Like, comment, subscribe. I see you next time. Peace. Hello, this is Kayla.